This portion of the news brought to you by Dodge Grab Life. Most young adults fresh out of college spend the summer pounding the pavement, looking for jobs, enjoying their last few months free from real world responsibilities. But there are exceptions to every rule and Alyssa Coleman is here now to introduce us to one of them. A 22 year old NYU graduate who survived the genocide in Rwanda as a child and has been dealing with real world responsibilities ever since. Alyssa. Well, Jim and Heidi, Jacqueline Murray Catetti moved to New York in 1995, just one year after her parents and six brothers and sisters were butchered to death by their friends and neighbors, their crime being members of a minority race in Rwanda. Now, instead of being bitter and angry, Jacqueline says she is grateful because she has the opportunity to speak out, to fight indifference, and help survivors who are still suffering. Genocide survivor Jacqueline Murray Catetti doesn't have any pictures from her childhood. Everything from her life in Rwanda was destroyed in 1994, including her entire family. My Hutu neighbors had taken uh, my parents, my six siblings, most of my aunts, uncles, the other two in a village, to the nearby river where they had proceeded to butcher them with machetes. Jacqueline was visiting her grandmother in another village when her family was slaughtered. This is a look at what was happening during the 100 day long genocide in Rwanda. Hutus killed their Tutsi friends and neighbors in mass. The Rwandan government encouraged it, calling the Tutsi minority cockroaches that deserve to die. It was only a matter of time before Hutu extremists came after Jacqueline and her grandmother. Desperate, Jacqueline's grandmother sent her to an orphanage. She told me, you know, don't worry, Jacqueline, I'm going to find somebody to hide me. This is only in a few days I'm going to come and I'm going to find you. And, you know, I, I believed her. That was the last time Jacqueline saw her grandmother. When the genocide finally ended, an uncle living in New York adopted 10-year-old Jacqueline and brought her to Queens. When I came here, one of the things that was very, you know, disappointing to me and that angered me was when I learned that why the killings had been going on in Rwanda, that many countries knew. And I couldn't really understand how it is that we as human beings could see people being massacred simply because of their race, their religion and not do anything. Now Jacqueline was on a mission to fight indifference. In high school, she hooked up with Holocaust survivor and mentor David Gerritsman. Together, they've traveled across the U.S., each telling their painful stories. Jacqueline's activism helped win her a full college scholarship from the Jerry Seinfeld Family Foundation. Seinfeld himself meets with the scholarship recipients every summer. He told me, you know, Jacqueline, I am, you know, I just want to let you know that you are one of our successful stories. I'm really glad that I got to know you, and I'm really glad that I was able to put you uh, in school at NYU, and please keep me in touch. I know you're going to do amazing things. Jacqueline is already doing amazing things. She was chosen to participate in Polo Ralph Lauren's Give campaign, which encourages community service and she continues in her effort to mobilize people. It is my hope that I can help everybody that I speak to to do something on the personal level. Most recently, she spoke to Hofstra University graduate students as well as the United Nations Youth Assembly. Just being around Jacqueline, she's a brave, brave, brave woman, and I feel so inspired to have someone like that in my presence. In 2003, Jacqueline attended the UN's annual International Day of Peace, where she met with Elie Wiesel and Muhammad Ali. Wiesel was so impressed with Jacqueline, he promised to help her publish her story. Jacqueline is hoping the book will be released early next year. Murray Catetti's other project is called Jacqueline's Human Rights Corner. It's an initiative with the nonprofit organization Miracle Corners of the World. Its goal is to build a community center in Rwanda to help survivors who are still struggling 13 years later. There's still a large number of survivors who are still without basic necessities. There's a large number of orphans without education, without jobs. A lot of women who are raped or infected with HIV AIDS and they're dying every day because they have no access to medication. A big undertaking for someone fresh out of college, a 22 year old who can only imagine what life would be like if her carefree, happy childhood hadn't ended so abruptly and senselessly. There are many nights after the genocide when I used to go to bed and think that the next day when the next morning when I would wake up, somebody would come and tell me, you know, 
Jacqueline, you have been dreaming. Jacqueline, you had a nightmare. And uh, everything will go back to normal. After telling her story a few years back at the UN, Jacqueline told me several delegates from around the world personally promised her they wouldn't let another atrocity like that ever happen again. So you can imagine her frustration and disappointment over what is happening in Darfur today. Mm. She's incredible. Incredible. I mean, to, 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 to rise up out of a tragedy that immense and make something of herself the way she has is, is, is remarkable. To say the least, I know. She just leaves everyone speechless. Now, there was so much we couldn't include. If you want to hear excerpts from my full interview with Jacqueline, just log on to our website, CW11.com. And for more information on Jacqueline's Human Rights Corner, you can go to our website for the link to that as well. Right. Alyssa, thank you. Thank you. It's a practice becoming all too common in our area. Home insurance policy.